This is the last video for the week, and I want to cover three more tests, three more techniques to figure out if a series converges. The first is the integral test. Sometimes the terms of a series can be expressed as a function f of n, where f is an ordinary integrable function. If this is the case, then I can consider the improper integral of the function from 1 to infinity. This is something quite similar to the sum. They do not have the same value, they're not equal, but what is instead true is they have the same convergence behavior. If the improper integral converges, then so does the sum and vice versa. This means that the integral, while it cannot be used to calculate the value of the sum, sum can be used to check the convergence of the sum. If the integral converges, the sum converges. This lets me talk about zeta series again. The convergence criteria for zeta series is p greater than 1. But why is this so? Well, I can use some of the other tests to figure out why this is the case. I know that the harmonic series diverges. I proved that directly using the definition last week, so I can rely on that fact. Well, if p is less than 1, the end of the p is less than p. Taking a power less than 1 decreases something. This is like roots or reciprocals. It's less than the original. Well, then in the reciprocal, 1 over n to the p is larger than 1 over n. Therefore, for p less than 1, the terms are larger than the terms of the harmonic series, which is a divergent series, so direct comparison shows divergence. Well, that covers all p less than 1. All of those will diverge. What about p greater than 1? The condition says this converges, but why? Well, here I can use the integral test. The equivalent integrable function is 1 over x to the p, I can write that as x to the negative p. And then if I integrate, I use the power rule. The new exponent is one more, negative p plus 1, and then I divide by that new, new exponent. Well, this is an improper integral, so I take the limit of the upper bound as it goes to infinity. I evaluate on the bounds at 1 and a, and subtract the evaluation to a minus the evaluation at 1. And I take the limit. The first term here in the limit is 0. This is where p greater than 1 is important. Without that fact, this part of the limit would not decay to 0. This exponent needs to be positive at the denominator, which means that p has to be strictly larger than 1. The remaining term is a constant, so the limit is finite. And that means that the series also converges, so this proves, using the integral test, the convergence criteria for the zeta series. Here is the second test for this video. I can consider, consider the ratio of the terms of a series, so a n plus 1 over a n, and also with absolute value. Then I can take the limit of this ratio. If this limit is larger than 1, the series will diverge. If this limit is less than 1, the series will converge. And if this limit is exactly 1, the test is inconclusive. And to be complete, the third test is very similar, um, which is going to be the last test for this week. And instead of ratios, it takes the nth root of the absolute value. So instead of the ratios of the n plus 1 and nth term, it's just the nth root of the nth term. But the criteria less than 1, greater than 1, equal than 1 are exactly the same. There will be lots of examples this week in the activities, and many in the notes as well. I'm going to do just one example here in the video for the ratio test. Ratio test is most useful for exponents and factorials, since there will be lots of cancellation in the ratio. Consider this series with terms n to the 5 e to the negative n. I look at the limit of the ratio of the terms, so the n plus 1 term has n plus 1 in the place of n. I write the negative exponent in the denominator, so the n plus first term is n plus 1 to the 5 over e to the n plus 1. Then the nth term is n to the 5 over e to the n. And once I simplify the nested fraction, this is the expression I get. Then I can simplify. I have e to the n in the, in the denominator, and all but one of these cancel with the e to the n in the numerator, leaving 1 over e left over. This is where ratio test works well when many things cancel off. The n plus 1 and n are both inside a power of 5, so I can write them inside a single bracket, n plus 1 over n to the power of 5, and then I can simplify this, bringing the limit inside. The 1 over n term will disappear as n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0, so the bracket will give in the limit 1 to the 5, and 1 to the 5, of course, is just 1, so the, the limit, all told, of the ratio of the terms converges to 1 over e, and 1 over e is less than 1, and the ratio test says that if the limit of the ratio of the terms is less than 1, the series is convergent. Therefore, this series converges. This finishes all the tests. In total, there is the test for divergence, 
the alternating series test, direct comparison, asymptotic comparison, integral test, ratio test, and root test. The major work this week is really figuring out which test to use. There are many examples in the notes and many in the activities. Practice and exposure is needed to figure out which text tests work for which series. Very briefly, here are some general ideas and heuristics to get you started. The asymptotic order is usually the first thing I look at. If I can find an asymptotic comparison easily, that's often the most efficient test. The test for divergence is another good early technique. Look at the limit of the terms, and if that limit is not zero, then you know convergence is impossible, and you can get rid of a bunch of series that this way with a very quick limit. If the series is an alternating series, then you basically always use the alternating series test. The integral test is good for series which have terms with functions that can be integrated, like exponentials, logarithms, trigs, hyperbolics. So if you see some of those functions, consider trying the integral test. The ratio test is particularly good for factorials, because lots of terms will cancel, and it's also often also good for exponents for the same reason. The root test is pretty rarely used, but it can also be good for some exponents, and there are some exponent expressions that work better in the root test than they do in the other tests.